Today we are talking about preparing for quieter periods in your business. And this is a follow-up from last week's um, topic, which was about taking advantage of the festive season, which could mean for certain businesses an influx of cash flow. Welcome, Anton. Thank you. So talking about preparation, um, preparing for the quieter season in your business, what does this preparation entail? Well, obviously not all businesses have a bumpest time at the end of the year in the yeah. festive season. There's businesses that close completely. Construction is an example. I know the clothing industry shuts down over December, January. And this can mean that your business end up having two months with very little cash flow. Yeah. So unlike a tourism business or a hospitality business or a restaurant that is very busy over December and January, you could find yourself faced with a business that has no, no income cash. Yeah. for half of December and half of January and you're kind of going to the new year having ultimately often spent any savings that you made during the year just to cover those quiet times. Yeah. And this episode where we're talking about now is really designed to actually give some tools and strategies to that type of industry or that type of business. So if you're this type of business owner which you just described, where do you start and when do you start in terms of this planning? That's a good question. I mean, I think the first step is actually recognizing when those quiet periods happen in your particular business. So it's quite easy after two or three or four years of trading, even maybe one or two years of trading, to actually identify seasonal peaks and troughs and patterns in your business yeah. that you're going to face probably in most years. Yeah. So let's say, for example, you identify that, that after the 15th of December, generally your industry, the business dries up yeah. and it kind of gets going again towards the end of January. That means you should start planning for that sort of mid-year, June, July, anticipate that it's going to happen and make sure that, that you have strategies to allow yourself to kind of make it through those quiet periods. Yeah. But don't wait till they're upon you and then start scrambling or getting very depressed or panicky yeah. because that's often when bad business decisions are made. Um, this is interesting because we are doing this towards the end of December. So uh, I'm just thinking about an entrepreneur who's out there who's thinking, shucks, that's my business. So what should they do now? Okay, it's not too late. Okay. That's the good news. I think the first thing to, to recognize is that any business in the world generally does have these sort of peaks and troughs. So you're not unique. Um, it's quite a unique type of business that would be busy 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, so the first step is to recognize that this happens. It's natural in business and it's something that you've got to manage, you know, like any other business. Yeah. Secondly, anticipating it means that you put squirrel away a little bit of money in your busy times, in your peak times, and we've spoken before about that 5% saving where I've suggested that every business takes 5% from every invoice they generate and put it, puts it into a, sort of a slush fund, a rainy day fund. Yeah. And that's one area that can tide you over during these quiet times. Another strategy is to use the time to actually engage with your old clients. So you know you've got a bit of quiet time, there's a bit of downtime, you've got hours on your hands, pick up the phone, go and see your old clients who might not have engaged with you before, reintroduce yourself, tell them about some specials, some stuff you got planned for the next year. Yeah. That's often a great time to reconnect when people are sort of planning and considering what, what they're going to do for the following year. Yeah. And another very tangible strategy that one can use to manage quiet, quieter periods is catch up on your admin. Now, not many of us like admin, yeah. but certainly it's stuff that needs to get done. And usually when you're busy and in the midst of operations, it's stuff that gets put to the back burner. So for sort of small entrepreneurially driven businesses that don't have a lot of staff, yes. this quiet time is actually a godsend. It allows you to make sure that everything's up to date, catch up on your admin, get your tax clearance certificates in place, do some strategizing for the following year and use that time. And finally, take a bit of time out when it's quiet. And also quiet, maybe polish on your pitch if you need to. Sure. I mean, reinventing take, your business plan. Takes, but I would say take some proper time out. 
Okay. Chances are you've probably been working 14 hours a day yes. for the last 10 months. So come a dip in, 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 in your business, when you're in the workload. It's actually a sign that says, listen, it's okay. Yeah. Go to the beach, you know, get a tan, see your friends, enjoy the holidays and get energized for what's going to be a busy year next year. It's not the end of the world that you're a bit quiet now. It's probably the universe's way of saying, hey, relax. So in closing, now this um, business has done all this, or this business owner has done all this now. So what should be the next step? I think the next step is to, is to recognize that there, even though there are cyclical trends in any business, and any business is going to have peaks and troughs, yeah. um, use the, the strategy and the, and the time that you have in those quieter periods to try and come up with ways of mitigating them. So an example would be, you know, every year in December, January, my traditional business dries up. Yeah. Is there another revenue stream that I can maybe channel in that time? Um, you know, I manufacture product, but maybe over that period I can offer training yeah. as a revenue generator. On a Saturday morning, I can run a course for people to come in and learn how to manufacture glassware or whatever my product might be. Yeah. Um, can I, f so that next year, I don't have a scenario where I'm busy, 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 and then stone dead, and then busy, busy, busy. You know, that I actually can mitigate the yeah. cash flow a little bit by strategizing other potential sources of revenue over that time.